Hey guys, welcome back. DeFi, DGN, Strip, and Farm for Poverty. I'm your host, Strip Coach, dropping knowledge bombs on all Forex Shark related projects. And in today's video, we got some knowledge bombs straight from the GOAT himself. He did an AMA with Driptopian. And as per usual, I'm going to summarize that for you because there's a lot of information to digest in these AMAs. This one was two and a half hours long. And uh, you guys really just want the high notes. If you want the whole thing, of course, you know where to get it. Go straight to Dritopian's page and take a listen at that. Now, as always, shout out to the ladies of the faucet. We got Irene and Wonder Woman's notes here to ensure we don't miss anything. And the main points they highlighted is what I'm gonna cover in here. So the uh, two big things that were mentioned was the new cross chain model. And I'm gonna drop that alpha of who I think it will be because I have a very good speculation of who that will be. And also he mentioned um, how they are doing the dividends um for their rewards as the owners of the contractor developers and whatnot so that was a new information about a new contract that they created to specifically remove probably a lot of the fud that popped up about three four months ago so let's get into the first bit and instead i'm going to play it straight from forex so you guys can hear it discussion right now whether it's something we're going to be adding uh for lodge sorry about that that's 2.4x and that's probably not something you guys can listen to so let's play that back <laughs> oh whether it's something we're going to be adding uh, for Lodge or something that will come shortly after Lodge. And this is another lending option that we'll be offering, which is, which is for single assets, because currently the only form of lending that we're doing for uh, our platform is to pancake swap. There's another, and that is LPs. So that's liquidity token lending. Right, okay. Uh, we have another option on the table for single asset lending. Uh, we would start with BNB and BUSD, and it's a uh, it's it's a low risk, you know, fully decentralized, fully uh, uh, immutable type of model, just like PancakeSwap, just as low risk as PancakeSwap, and it would allow us to earn about an additional ten percent APY on top of the 40% that we're making from the pancake swap lending. And that's just if the, um, if the if the collateral that we're lending is the same. Now, what typically happens is the single asset staking typically is larger. So, uh, so most likely it will be larger than a 10% increase. And when we're talking about 10%, on a billion dollars uh or a combined 50 percent on you know a billion plus dollars this is tens of billions of dollars of additional capital that gets paid out to our investors in the form of a busd dividend model which is a a very unique uh opportunity that is not available anywhere else in in crypto uh all right so he was mentioning this so basically in the farms all we have before is the ability to stake these assets into pancake swap and earn cake now the pools is something we never had a opportunity to uh stake anywhere else there was never anything that was introduced in the previous v2 v1 version of the farm and he said he's going to start with busd and BNB as single assets, whereas I guess wrap BNB. And what he said is that a lot of people have these assets and it could be more value TBL wise than the combined amount of what's in the farms because these assets, especially BUSD, ETH and BTC, um, obviously these are the assets that you want to hold long-term blue chip. And then in a bear market, of course, anything uh, linked to uh, USD, is a good thing to hold. So he's saying that that could be billions of dollars and that there's a low risk lending opportunity. Now, what that is, I decided to just do a quick search and this was released um, earlier this month. PancakeSwap partners with Seller Network to Seller Network to power its cross chain liquidity farming. Users can provide liquidity on Ethereum and harvest cake rewards on the Binance Smart Chain with low fees. So we have the seller network here that actually has a bridge where 
which this would make sense when you want to add liquidity as BNB or US, uh, BUSD. So we have a BUSD pool here and they don't have a lot in it. And being able to add that would be, could be who they're talking about. I don't know, but that article is very recent, makes a lot of sense. Then there's also an article from BSC News on here where they talked about um, the bridge fee is now the same as Stargate, Stargate's liquidity transport protocol that powers the PancakeSwap bridge. So it could also be Stargate. I don't know which, but it's one of these two because these articles just came out. This article is the 29th of September and Stargate is very similar. Where is that? That's uh, another cross chain, cross chain bridge as well. And then they need liquidity on this in order for people to make transfers between these two bridges. So there we have BUSD again, and this pool has 40 million. So it could be Stargate. Stargate or Seller, I don't know, but there's ETH sitting with 2 million as well. So, and they're using liquidity on Arbitrum and Optimism. So if you're not familiar, there's basically multiple chains. We're on the Binance Smart Chain. And in order to get from one uh, chain to another, there has to be some kind of bridge because they don't interoperate where they just share the data automatically. So you have to actually find a way to get that from one network to another, especially between ERC-20 and BEP-20, like ETH. And a lot of these are what they call EVM compatible chains like Matic and Phantom, but I won't go into that. So anyway, that's the alpha for that section. Stargate or Seller, I don't know which one. Stargate seems to have a little bit better pools, but either way, he's saying that we can get an additional 10%, which is based on the fees. So whenever you use these protocols, they charge you a swap fee to migrate from one chain to another. And we could basically collect a percentage of that because we're holding or providing liquidity um, on their, their platform. It's really no different than a staking pool. It's just done a little different because it's between chains. All right, let's move on to the next part of the AMA. Uh, he goes a little more in detail on this. So let's listen to that and see if you guys agree with my hypothesis. Just a quick message, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss another video. This helps bring brand awareness to the channel as well as all Forex Shark related projects. Thank you. Uh, to be able to support this dividend. And Animal Farm is the exact opposite of that kind of model where uh, we're providing utility both in the form of lending to PancakeSwap and also, uh, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if I should leak what the uh, Go on. Uh, let me wait, let me wait till oh. it's uh, <laughs> until, until it's one hundred percent a short thing. But there's uh, there's a uh, there's a cross chain model that is uh, uh, that is being utilized on BSC that is. Uh, you know, a very, uh, very solid project and, uh, we could potentially do lending to them and, mm -hmm. uh, basically provide collateral for their cross chain model and earn additional capital. And this would be through single asset staking. So this is another major utility, right? It, it allows people to migrate cross chain and, uh, they pay a fee when they do this cross chain, uh, transacting. And this fee would get paid out to us uh, based on what we're providing uh, this service in the form of our single assets that are uh, that are being lent from PancakeSwap to this model, and that will allow us to generate an extra, you know, ten percent plus uh, every year on our platform. So, all right, so. That was just him explaining that. And like you said, it's not confirmed or whatever yet, but I do believe it's probably Stargate more so than Seller Network. So that's just my hypothesis on that. All right, let's move on to the next part. So it was the founder's contract. Uh, I think that's highlighted in here. Yeah, uh, this one right here. So basically he's going, I'm gonna play that clip and then break down what that means as well. Let's see, that's uh, 4429. from the platform and v2 
added an additional level of decentralization through our founder management contract. And what this is, is a contract that locks the pigs, which are owned by the development team in the pig pen. So we can never access those pigs. We can only collect the BUSD that those pigs earn. What, so it Even removes the, the 2% pigs... withdrawal? It, like you just zero, zero withdrawals on the pigs completely? Just BUSD? Uh, from the founder. Yeah, for, yeah from the founder uh, well, contract. I'm talking yeah. about specifically the, the uh, founder tokens, which are utilized to collect our 0.7% yeah, of course, uh, percent, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, fee in the form of USD. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, so even, even the pigs. So you know, the pig pen doesn't just pay out a dividend in BUSD. It also pays a dividend in pigs, which are coming from the piggy bank. So even the pigs, which are being paid out uh, as a dividend to the pig pen, we can't even withdraw those. So we have <laughs> no access to uh, to withdraw or uh, you know, of course, sell any of those pigs uh which are allocated to the founders to be able to allow us to uh decent to uh use a decentralized way to collect our our dividend model and this founder contract has a uh a function which burns the pigs if the pig holdings ever get more than 10 percent of the uh the supply in the pig pen. Huh. So, at, so as pigs get paid to it, paid to it from the uh, the piggy bank and the, the the contracts which are generating pigs, the uh, the supply maintains at ten percent of the pig pen. Uh, so, we'll never collect more than this zero point seven five percent debt fee. And uh, those pigs will never hit the market. There, there's no function to even be able to withdraw those pigs from the contract. Wow. So this was very important to us. Um, and of course, it's important for a ton of reasons, but uh, primarily to ensure the decentralization of the platform and to give everybody uh, you know, uh, assurance that those pigs, which are being held by the uh, development team, cannot ever be sold on the market. They're always held by this founder contract, which uh, which maintains the developer supply to 10% of the pig pen stake. And this way, we can collect our 0.75% dev fee and the... Uh, and the pigs, which we utilize to do that, never, never hit the mark. All right. So that is bullish in and of itself. Um, so what he's saying is this is the pigs contract that we have here. Um, right now it's 358,000 pigs. And I don't know which one belongs to them. I thought there was another set of uh, contracts or pigs. But basically what he's saying is that they have a new contract now that will ensure that they maintain um 10 percent or less or basically at 10 percent it's probably pegged directly at 10 percent and then they also cannot sell these pigs so they just essentially you can look at them as they're kind of burned from the supply in the sense that that 10 percent is never going to be um sold so it's locked in a contract and if it ever gets higher than that 10 percent then it will burn those pigs and they're only able to claim the BUSD dividends. So that's how Forex and the team take their um, dev fee. So that's really, really innovative and smart on their behalf. There was a big FUD campaign back in the day because they minted pigs in the contract. Um, and uh, there was people who thought that that was dishonest or whatever the case may be. So now he's putting that out there, letting them know how it's gonna work and ensuring that there can be no more FUD going forward about those pigs because they can only collect the BUSD rewards and it's a fraction of the total percent of the fees that everybody makes. So I think that that is a really innovative and smart way to do it and bullish for us in the long term. 
All right. Uh, one other thing, I think. Let's see. Um, we talked about the lending model. Yeah, let's pull that up. It's not really new, but it just gives you some insight into what Forex is thinking and where he's trying to take things in the future. And I want to play that clip. So let's go here. Massive opportunity ahead of us. And there's so much more I want to do. So uh, currently, our model does collateral lending to major decentralized platforms. Uh, by next year, I want to be able to do collateral lending to individuals. So allow people to use their collateral to take out a loan. Uh, and I want to do an insurance model that's insuring people's stakes. Uh, sort of uh, like DeFi's version of FDIC. And these insurance and lending models are not just going to service our platform, just like Scratchy will just service our platform. They'll be utilized on our platform first, which is going to give our platforms a nice first mover advantage and add all of this additional utility and additional cash flows to our platform. But I want to create products that scale across all of DeFi. And when you do that, you provide this awesome utility to your native platforms, but then it becomes much bigger than it ever would be if you just create it for your native platforms. So that raises all ships, right? It makes your mm -hmm. native platforms bigger than they would ever be. And it increases the value of DeFi as a whole. That is huge. So um, basically it just lets you know he's forward thinking, right? So if he's trying to now build utility to bring up the actual use case of DeFi, then that means all boats float. Like, so if you're getting in now, um, the sky is the limit for where Forex wants to take this. And that is really, really amazing and super bullish to uh, be a part of. So we don't know what that will look like, but it is definitely a game changing opportunity. Last, I'm not gonna play the clip, but basically you wanna check out maybe these notes. Um, he said roughly about 48 hours before launch, uh, is when they will have uh, the go time actually announced and they're going to let people know how to do the migrations and stuff like that if you have assets that are currently staked on the farm. One other thing I want to bring up in this uh, video is that pigs have taken off. <laughs> they are now sitting at 189 in Lee's AMA. If you watch, they were sitting around 170 something. So, um, yeah, pigs are on the rise. I do think that we will uh, probably get really close to our all-time high. Not, a, yeah, I guess the all-time high that we had at launch, which is um, one or two. Yeah, there it is, two thirty something like that. So we're definitely approaching that for sure, and I could see that getting back there pretty soon. So if you miss the bottom on the pigs, there could be another sell-off, but I think. At worst case, we get back to 150. But I think right now, all the people that want it out have gotten out. If you look at this, it's nothing but buy pressure or sell pressure all the way down from, from the initial launch. So with all the marketing stuff coming in, there should be enough buy pressure um, for people getting pigs. And there's not a lot of pigs. When you look at the pigs that are available, uh, 358,000. And then 90% right here is staked, like locked in contracts, sorry. And depending on when people were compounding, they may or may not even have access to these pigs to sell. So that's huge. Pigs will definitely take off and um, that adds use case for drip. So, you know, things can be definitely moving forward. So I uh, hope you guys found this video informative and a good summary of the AMA. Um, don't have anything else I want to add. Definitely check out the notes if you want more details. And if you really, really want the uh, nitty gritty, then check out the full two and a half hour AMA. All right, guys, you know the drill. Please like and subscribe. I'm pushing my way to 3K, sitting around like 2.7, 2.8, somewhere in there. So I appreciate every single one of you and uh, lift daily and achieve your impossible. See you.